Hey guys, it's Christine, Narc Survivor. Um, so, in my last two videos, I've touched uh, briefly on the Narcissist New Supply. Um, today I'm going to discuss, uh, we're going to get into love bombing. Um, I'm going to just kind of go over this from my personal experience of what exactly happened to me at the beginning. Um, so just to kind of for the new people that are coming in and watching my videos and, and um, you know, getting educated on the content of narcissistic abuse. So there's three stages primarily for being in a relationship with a narcissist. There is the uh, love bomb, the devaluation, and then the discard. Um, sometimes they'll re-idolize you, uh, and that's kind of in between the love bomb and devalue stage. They kind of like re-idolize you and then you discard and it kind of is like a circle like a like a pattern um and then until you finally get to the final discard of either yourself discarding the narcissist or the discard or the narcissist discarding you okay so um I'm gonna go over some of the red flags that you should just kind of keep your your eye out for be aware be alert um and just be on guard uh, for these particular red flags that I'm going to share with you. So, at the beginning of my relationship, we'll call it the love bomb stage, mm, my ex-narcissist was very charming, uh, charismatic, um, was just very pleasant to be around, um, would give me extra attention, um, like almost too good to be real, like I was the center of the universe, like I was a priority, like it consumed his life and his himself as a being, um, which should be a red flag right there, however. Um, so the first red flag for me is my ex um, talked about his ex very poorly, um, with his ex-wife, they were married for 13 years. He would share things with me like she's dirty, um, she doesn't clean herself, um, she doesn't cook meals. He would explain to me how he felt he had to rush home every evening to cook meals because she would yell at him and make him feel, um, horrible about himself that the, to the fact that he would have to, or to the point that he would have to go home and cook meals and, and take care of the household. Um, <clears throat> he used to say things like how she couldn't keep a job and he was the, uh, you know, the provider, the income for the family. And it's just, it was just so much put onto his plate that eventually he just got, you know, it got to be too much that he couldn't handle it. And, and that's why he had to leave um, that relationship. Um, so what I've learned about narcissistic abuse is usually when they are, um, projecting or discussing about their past relationships, it's what they've done to that person. So he would tell me how his ex, uh, was, you know, flirting with other men, uh, and she had cheated on him. Um, looking back now, I know that that's not the case. It was him cheating on her. Um, and he cheated throughout pretty much most of their marriage. She may not be aware of it, but I'm thinking that it was all being pieced together and it came together in the end. Um, and so, I mean, it's just, that's what happens is they do a lot of, uh, it's a lot of projection and, and gaslighting and, and lying. They lie so much, it's unreal. So that's a red flag. If they've got nothing positive to say about their ex and it's always the ex's fault, um, that should make you question right there and just kind of, hmm. Second thing, gifts. They buy gifts all the time. Uh, roses, they're being delivered to your work. Like, they're making you feel like you are special, you stand out. Like, where have you been their whole life? You're the missing puzzle piece. You're the cream to the crop. Excuse me. They make you feel like their life was just not complete until you arrived. Um, that's another red flag. So just be aware of that. Conversation and attention. They will stay up all night, uh, talking to you, um, 
texting you, sending you dirty pictures. They're notorious for their their pictures of their body parts. They feel that they're God's gift to creation. Um, personally, there's not much to brag about, but you know what? It is what it is. Um, but that's what they do. They stay up till all hours of the night. Um, and that's usually like the first beginning sign is like they try to, you know, you're tired, you're exhausted. And it's just, it's the start of the process, um, of the, the love bombing and the grooming. They groom you. Um, okay. So we've talked about, uh, them speaking of their ex, uh, they will blame everything on their ex, their, their finances going downhill. It's their ex's fault. It's always, you know, my ex took everything from me, left me with nothing. I'm starting over. Woe is me. It's the same old, same old. It's a cycle. Um, they'll continue to do it. The same things that he told me about his ex, he's saying about me. It's a cycle. It just repeats itself over and over and over again. Um, what else? Yeah, the love bombing. I mean, they're grooming you. Um, it's a very, like, it's a difference between the overt and the covert narcissists. Covert are very, like, oh, you know, well, I lost my job and, you know, so-and-so, uh, you know, did this and because they did that and it, it ended up, I ended up losing my job and, you know, and they never take responsibility or accountability for their actions. Um, and you'll notice that in the early stages as well. Um, everything is a facade. What appears to be, um, what it appears to be, it actually isn't. You have to look more deeply, but because you're blinded by, the um, chemicals that are being released because you've just found this, your soulmate, you're completely in love. Like, where have you been all my life? Like, you're just, they're marrying you um, into, you know, to present somebody that, that they know that you are looking for and you're falling hard for them. And by the time you realize it, it's too late. So, yeah, there's the attention and the conversation and the keeping you up all night and the admiration, making you feel like you're, uh, you know, a princess, like, you know, they're waiting on you hand and foot. They're making you feel like, you know, there's no one else in this world but you. And it's a great feeling. And the chemicals that it's releasing makes you feel on top of the world, happy. And, you know, you honestly are falling in love and you feel like you found your soulmate and you are about to find out the hard way. Um, so usually, uh, they will, like, I don't know how to say this, but they come into money during income tax time. So they'll usually groom and love bomb around that time, usually between February and June-ish. They'll go out, splurge, spend all their money on you, and you think that, you know, oh, wow, I'm special, and, you know, they're buying me gifts, and you just feel great. But that's soon going to dwindle down to next to nothing, and the gifts are going to start coming, and you're going to start... Um, entering the devaluation stage and you're going to start to be treated like crap. Um, and then all the stories and you're going to look back and all the stories they told you about your their ex and how they treated them, you're going to slowly piece it together and be like, wow, I don't think that that's the way it went down. All right. So, you know, the gifts, the, the putting um, down of their ex, um, This is where, like, when you enter the devaluation stage, you're going to start to experience the silent treatment. So you're going to get into a fight, and the narcissist will be silent for a couple hours, and then it'll be a couple days, and then it'll be a couple weeks. And, and at first, it's a punishment, a tactic that they use, but after that, it's just them finding new supply. And whenever that new supply doesn't work out, they'll come back to you and try to work it out and apologize and say they're going to change and, you know, or would this happen because you did this? And if you would have done this and made me feel like, you know, you loved me and you want me in your life and you want me to be there, then, you know, none of this would have happened. And again, they are able to turn it around so that you are the reason why this happened. Like they blame shift. And so, 
it makes you second guess your boundaries and your um your self-worth because you're constantly fighting and battling with yourself and in you know asking yourself you know is this did this happen because of you um you know are you are you the one to blame for this and and so it's a constant circle yo-yo kind of you know going on in your head and you're just trying to wrap your your brain around it um so yeah and usually like I find like from the beginning to the end of my relationship with my ex-narcissist um I deteriorated as a person I um I started turning to you know emotional eating I gained weight. I wasn't happy with myself. I was pretty much in a position where he wanted me to be and I just couldn't move forward with my life. I felt stuck. I felt like my energy was drained. Um, I had to seek, um, you know, outer services for therapy um, and slowly, uh, you know, with the help of my therapist, slowly was able to realize that I needed to get out of um that relationship, that it was toxic, um, you know, explaining to me what exactly I was dealing with and how to move forward. Um, so it took me, it took me a while to get there, but I finally was able to move on with my life and find my happiness and my self-worth again. But it took almost a year and a half to get there. It's not an easy road. It's, it was very hard for me to overcome all of the obstacles and triggers that I had to overcome to get through, um, you know, what had happened in, in two and a half years being with an abusive, uh, narcissistic individual. And it took its toll on me and mentally, emotionally, spiritually, it had destroyed me. And, um, it was one of the hardest things I ever had to do was to self heal, find myself and work on myself and, you know, figure out why, um, I was attracted to the narcissist in the first place. So, you know, I hope that my videos resonate with you. I hope that you are, um, your healing journey uh, happens a lot faster than mine did. And I'm just trying to, you know, um, give you guys my personal uh, history and my personal experience with my ex narcissist to, to help you guys. And I hope that, you know, it, it helps each and every one of you along your way of your healing journey. Um, so anyways, I will post another video shortly. Take care.